Hello, this is Dan Rodonez. Today we have a uh, 2017 Chevy Traverse. Okay, uh, Vigo got towed in uh, due to the fact that the customer lost the key with the key fob. Um, today I want to show you step by step how to program the key fob. Now we are using the GDS2 platform nowadays has succeeded uh, the Tech 2 for from GM um, that's just the way we're going out uh, towards the future no more Tech 2 everybody the, um, very popular very popular in uh, the last 15 20 years I believe the Tech 2 was and GDS succeeded it um, it's a great great diagnostic system um, everything about it it just complements uh, all the GM data. Um, anything fully functional, uh, program modules, uh, program keys, um, all live data, um, all history, everything that you ever wanted, live and in color instead of the old Tech 2. Anyways, um, also along with that, no more service programming um, through the actual physical, uh, just the hardware. You actually need to be connected to um, the internet. Um, I guess GM wants people not to be ripping them off and uh, they want to collect all the monies for themselves uh, because you could get a Tech 2 from China, uh, a duplicate, and um, actually service modules and and program keys or whatnot um, so now they're you know they're basically um, just everything's online now to program uh, but you can do all the other functions um, you can uh, pull up DTC's data uh, you can have some bi-directional um, functions with the just a GDS2 connected to the laptop um, but anyways, uh, nowadays you have to re renew the lease um, through service programming. Um, and it's called, uh, the website's called TIS2Web. I can't get a good, okay, TIS2Web. Uh, basically, um, it's just, it's just a security function, making sure no one's running a hack software or whatnot. Um, usually, um, the dealers definitely have, you know, um, access to TIS2 Web because they're all um, associated with them, of course. Um, fleet companies um, such as uh, Hertz, Enterprise, Budget, Avis. Um, all the big rental companies um, I can imagine some other probably some cities some cities uh, have access to them uh, any fleet company for sure has access to this to web and they pay it uh, a yearly contract or whatnot and usually GM wants uh, all the technicians to be certified at some level um, at least online training or whatnot um, so they do get refunded, reimbursed, I mean, for any warranty work or whatnot. But anyways, um, so if you are, uh, you are a dealer or a fleet company, uh, this is going to be the easiest way for you to uh, program a key on the newer GMs through GDS2. You need to go to service programming, not just the GDS hardware you need to be online um, so here we are we brought up uh, SPS um, of course you need a password and, and an ID or whatnot to get to this point um, do you want to run this application uh, usually these are uh, sometimes uh, security you know things or whatnot you might or may or might not have these uh, certain steps like I do but I need to um, 
keep up with me over here. Uh, my internet connection is very slow. Right there, renewing lease. Bam. I guess it renews the lease every time you use it. Okay. Goes through its process. I, uh, by the way, I cut the key, a blank key with the chip inside of it, and that's what you're programming. Uh, the key fob is a totally different uh, situation there. Um, of course, uh, in house, got one of them old school um, uh, key cutters or whatnot. Uh, usually, you need. Um, you need to run some soft type of software and of course you got the hardware if you want to get a key cutter I think they run about between three thousand to five thousand dollars or something like that for a basic setup um, let me look over here you see that orange um, application circle right there Man, it's already up I've kind of been I didn't notice it. Sometimes it just pops up. Uh, sometimes you have to go looking for it if you actually pre previously uh, opened it up. <sighs> Sorry for all my movement. I'm trying to get a better picture of it. Uh, there we go. Sideways, maybe sideways. We're using MDI. And we go down to reprogram ECU. And we'll we'll go to next. It says turn ignition off, verify vehicle battery fully charged, turn ignition on, engine off. I usually just go 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 go. So we're gonna go to next. I know my battery's fully charged because I've been in the car for a little while with it turned on and whatnot, but we just go right ahead. We'll go to Chevy. So 2017. This is a Chevy Traverse. Okay, it doesn't belong in the passenger car uh, vehicle type or the MVP incomplete or L or light duty truck. It's a medium duty truck, and it automatically is gonna scan for the the, the body control modules um, memory for the VIN. And sixty-five, six-nine. That's our, that's our vehicle. Any other vehicle, you'll have a drop-down screen. Like I say, if you have a Camaro or something, you'll be just in a regular car type. Uh, where are we with that? Okay. Okay. We go to next. Verified vehicle. Okay. In this one, we see all our modules lined up over here from anything from park assist control module to the radio control module transmission control module but we're looking for the theft deterrent module okay let's go over here i'm sorry since we're programming a key we're not we're actually not replacing the theft deterrent module actually we're actually just learning as you can see so don't get these too confused we're just learning a new key that's it we got three options over here clear DTM fleet status not really sure what that is uh, we haven't replaced the ECM so we don't have to rep uh, or PK3 I'm not really sure what that means um, but um, <clears throat> pretty sure probably that's part of PK3 I can imagine as part of the theft deterrent module uh, system maybe itself who knows right now I gotta go and take a look at that maybe I'll follow up with you guys a little bit later on but uh, this is how I programmed it vehicle theft deterrent learn for learning replacement keys um, once I hit the button, it takes 13 minutes for to uh, for the for the um, 
for the software to um, to access the that turn module in the vehicle this is just to make sure it, it doesn't do it any quicker I believe to make sure that people are not trying to steal the car or whatnot trying to make a bogus key so it goes through different adaptations and learn processes so um, pretty much um, after it goes through its process and accesses the theft um, deterrent control module um, it programs the key by itself and uh, you erase the DTCs um, and then you go ahead and turn on the vehicle uh, at that point later on you pro reprogram the key fob now the 2017's I have been noticing a lot that all your older key fobs 2016's 2015's are not working um, I tried to use a couple that were in stock um, I believe they were all 2016's um, but I believe this one needs a newer key fob I've been running to that um, situation a couple manufacturers such as Kia and Ford where they're changing over to newer key fobs they're not newer key fobs they look exactly the same but they're using a different frequency um, to communicate with the um, with the body control module or whatnot of the vehicle um, but anyways um, I hope this helps anybody trying to uh, figure this out pretty quickly I know sometimes uh, get backed up and nobody there to help out but um, this is the way um, I actually learned this on my own um, because um, at my job uh, we're trying to get away from uh, uh, getting too many of uh, those uh, the mobile um, locksmiths or why not to come and cut the key and program the key or whatnot for us because we're saving ourselves a ton of money over here in the company is um, but uh, since we have all the tools well, we can actually do this but anyways signing out um, thank you for uh, watching and uh, please subscribe like share or whatnot hopefully uh, this video helps somebody out thank you very much